I'm interested in what's in that backpack. I hope it's a parachute. <laughs> it is. But I'm thinking you need to go a little here. higher than the roof, Mike. That's, I'm just, I'm, it's, I'm, it's I'm not more, a knapsack. I don't, I don't think the roof is high enough for you to jump off of with that parachute. No, it's not. Maybe the Tower of the Americas, but we're not going to be. We're not going to be doing that. Oh, come on! No, <laughs> we're, we're going to pull the ripcord and take it from air. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So imagine jumping out of a plane. You're going 120 miles an hour. Right. And, and you've got to do. You've got to do that. Oh and my gosh. You, you land on a dime like these guys can do. Guys and gals, they're from the Golden Knights, the U.S. Army parachute team, the Golden Knights, and they're literally the best of the best. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that is 12,000 feet flying the American flag at that height. Oh, my goodness. Sergeant First Class Corey Rush, U.S. Army parachute team, Golden Knights uh, demonstrator is here. How, how do you guys prepare for those kinds of jumps? Uh, you just you have to take a deep take breath. Take a leap of faith. <laughs> <laughs> Close your eyes and, and, then, and then just step out the door. Ste yeah, yeah, just yeah. like just like stepping down a step. Sure. Yeah. So you said there's about 60 members of the whole Golden Knights, and you're divided up into different teams. Yes, we have about 60 active jumpers on the the entire team. Okay, and you're uh, on the black team. team. I'm there's on the black demonstration team. Okay. Yes. Okay. And there's a gold team. And we have a gold demonstration team, and we have multiple competition teams, and we have a tandem team, and then our aviation section that flies and maintains our aircraft. So is that the what the colors represent? The like, black and gold uh, is the colors of the Army, so that's what we named our uh, demonstration teams, okay, black and gold. Right. And you're in town, I mean, the demonstration team obviously showing off the best of the best, which is what you're promoting with the Army All-American Bowl coming up here, because it's the best of all the, the high school players as well. And 700 jumps, and you pack your own parachute, right? Yes, I do. Okay. Wow, but you don't pack your reserve chute. No, I do not pack my reserve. That's uh has to be done by a certified parachute technician. And okay. So packing your own parachute takes how long? I can pack my main parachute in about seven minutes. And you, how long does so the reserve really? parachute And the reserve take? parachute takes about one to two hours. Wow. So you said your goal is to jump out and pack the chute before the plane lands? Yes. Absolutely. That's what? amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then get back in and just hop back out and oh, go for another ride. So that way God. we can do it again. So oh, there's no downtime at all right. or anything like well, that. Yeah. Okay, so I would think, because I've been on roller coasters and everything, that when you jump out of the plane, you know, the stomach's going to be going up your into, your, yeah, into your, like, your throat. Yeah, that, that's a very common misconception. So terminal velocity of the human while they're falling through the sky is about 120 miles per hour. The aircraft is flying 120 miles per hour, so when you jump out, you transfer from forward speed to downward so you don't get that belly rush. And, and what's the feeling like? You said it's... It's very freeing. It's, it's a hard to explain because there's nothing relative to you in the sky. Uh, you're just, you're out there, you're falling. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's serene. And you said the goal is to, as we saw in some of the video, hitting the X on the spot and just kind of landing Land on dimes? on the X. <laughs> That's okay. always the goal. And what, and, and, but sometimes Mother Nature can be a little fickle and blow you around a little that bit. That is true, yes. And it's just like, get back up and do it again, right? Yep, do it so. again. Okay. By the way, uh, two bronze stars, two tours in Iraq, one in Afghanistan. That's correct. And the Army Accommodation Medal, among yes. other things. Had to brag a little bit. Thank you for your service, sir. Yes, very much so. so much. All right, we got to see what's in the back of this thing here. So, and you can yeah, pop the parachute. Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna open this up and show so, everybody what. Now, yeah. typically, the rip, typically the he'd be cord? going at about, like you said, 120 miles an hour. Right? Yes. So this shoot would come out a lot faster. A lot faster than what I'm about to show okay, everybody. All right, yeah. Here we go. So this is a deployment sequence. So he's got a handle over here. And he would pull this handle. It's on his right, lower right side. So just yank it. No, uh, oh, yeah. you're going just to pull it out. Okay. And then. This is a little parachute in itself, and it, it catches the air, and it pulls, Okay. pulls the bag out, and then the lines pull off, and then after all the lines are pulled out, it pulls the parachute out of the bag. Ah, oh, okay. And then at this point, the wind is going to get caught on the inside of the parachute, and it is going to open it up. Grab that side. And this is pretty much it, almost like it the, it's almost like the airfoil on, a, on an airplane or the okay. wing of an airplane, right? A Ram Air parachute, you said? Yes, this is a Ram Air parachute. Okay. And how fast can you? You said going so now across start the running, ground. Mike. <laughs> yeah, ready? Here we go. <laughs> Let's see if we can get it on. <laughs> and, and you said as you're coming into land. There's some guys that go about 90 miles an hour just scooting across the ground? Yeah, members of our uh, canopy piloting team, they can go really fast uh, swooping across the, the the pond in the ground. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And, and we saw water in that video. So you scoot across. What do you do? Touch yeah, they, the water they, or something? They uh, do their swoop over the water because uh, if they were to impact, 
it would be a lot softer well, than hitting the ground. Okay. It, it, it's, it's, for, it's for safety, and they get to drag their foot across the water to make Which it look cool, too. Cool. That's kind of showing off <laughs> yeah. a little bit. Little yeah. Show voter, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is Absolutely. fantastic. And again, and you're going to be stationed down at the yeah, Alamo Dome, right at around the there. Alamo Dome. Uh, we are running a booth uh, along with uh, many other people at the Go Army Experience. Uh, we're here for the... Uh, the U.S. Army All-American Bowl. Yeah, okay. there's the information on the screen. Of course, if you want tickets or to attend, it's tomorrow at noon at the Alamo Dome. Just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very, so much very much. Me. And again, like we were saying, it's the best of the best of the uh, football players and the band members there and the Army. Those folks are the best of the best as well. So, so you're enjoying that, aren't you? This, <laughs> it, it's cool. I, mean, I, I got to admit, it's a cool factor. So speak. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he wants to because he's got to jump with this shoot, so <laughs> don't want to drag on the concrete here. So, <laughs> All right, coming up. <laughs> Speaking of best of the best, you know, there's a shooting team with the Army as well, oh, and yeah? they have actually gotten gold medals in the Olympics. Oh, yes, and David got to catch up with them yesterday, and he had quite a blast. Yeah, take a look. David Elder with SA Live. Well, you hear some gunshots going off in the background. That's because I am at the San Antonio Gun Club out here with some Olympians. You won't believe it. They are actual Olympians out here shooting some guns out here, and they're professional marksmen. And I'm actually going to give my, my hand here at, at trying to shoot some of these skeet that are getting launched out of this thing. All right, pull. There we go. The United States Army is in town getting ready to highlight the best of the best high school football players at the 2018 U.S. Army All-American Bowl. This is, the, this is the premier high school football game of America. Uh, this is the only place where you're going to see uh, high school, the best high school football players playing against each other, and it's going to be uh, televised nationally. To help promote the event, the U.S. Army Marksmanship Unit, including multiple Olympic gold medal winning athletes, showcased their talents and shot with local residents and public figures. Well, today we're interacting with some CUIs, which are some centers of influences from all across the country. They're here in town for all Army All-American Bowl, and it's, today's a, day, a chance for us to introduce ourselves, tell our Army stories, tell the people what the Army's done for us and how it's, it's helped us succeed in life, and uh, we get to do that around shooting sports. So we're actually going to bring them out today, introduce them to some safe handling of some shotgun shooting, let them try their hand at it, and uh, everybody's going to walk away successful today. The National PTA Committee has its sights set on helping students succeed by partnering with the U.S. Army to help give students more unique opportunities in the future. We sponsor some of their events. They sponsor some of ours at convention and other types. Um, we both have the same goals in mind as far as the education and career readiness and college preparedness of our students, especially in the secondary level. So you guys got to come out this Saturday to the U.S. Army All-American Bowl, showcasing the best of the best high school football players and high school band members. Going to be fantastic. And we're out here with the United States Army Marksman Unit. We're going to be finishing it off here. I'm going to try to shoot some more targets, but bear with me. Okay, I might, I might not hit them all. Pull. Pull. David didn't come here to play. <laughs> Pull. Pull. So much. Appreciate Press it. Press live. There we go. I'm David Elder. And don't forget, the U.S. Army All-America Bowl is tomorrow at noon at the Alamo Dome. And for more information and ticket information, go to salive.com. All right, coming up, skinny cocktails with a tequila twist. We're shaking things up on this fabulous Friday with drinks that have half the calories. That's coming up next. And New Year, why not a new hobby? We're showing you how to pick up the art of sewing. Three simple products that can be done in less than 20 minutes. San Antonio. This is SA Live. Well, it's always nice to perhaps ring in the new year with a little bit of a uh, libation and also helps out a local company. Marco Guerrero from Amadoro Tequila is here and some great uh, drink, I drink mixes with tequila, and this is a local company, you said? Uh, Leander, Texas. Okay. Which is northwest of Austin, small town. And three different 
grades, I guess you could say, of tequila. Yes, uh, we have the Blanco tequila, which mm -hmm. Blanco is unaged. All right. Uh, then which we is have the blue bottle. Yes, the Reposado, which is uh, so Reposado means rested in Spanish. But this is aged for about eight months. Mm -hmm. And then our last bottle here, the Anejo, which means aged in Spanish. Uh, this one's aged for 18 months. And so those are the three types. Okay. So what are we making today? Uh, so the first drink we're going to make is a um, old tequila, old fashioned. We're going to be using. Um, the reposado, if you want to just put some ice in that low ball. Okay. Tequilas really kind of come into being not just, you know, doing a tequila sunrise or something like that, really making the good specialty drinks with it nowadays. Yeah, I mean, it can be looked at as um, now almost like drinking a scotch. Uh, okay. It can have by itself. Uh, there's a lot of uh, craftsmanship uh, going into tequila. Just there's add a couple dashes. Good? Yep, perfect. Okay. And then we're going to take the reposado. All right. And just uh, add a dash of that in there. Oh, just a dash? Yeah, there you go. However you feel comfortable. <laughs> I'm, I'm comfortable with that. <laughs> I've never heard a bartender say, whatever makes you feel comfortable, so. And then a, just a dash of agave nectar. Okay. Just give a little squirt there. There you go. And Stir so the reason why we use agave nectar as a sweetener is it's actually made from the exact same plant that tequila is made from. So it meshes oh. or marries well. And this um, is it? And then, yeah, you're going to have here the orange as a garnish. Mm -hmm. It's really more for the aromatic. Ooh, that is nice. So, and uh, with tequilas, what's the best way to serve them? You serve room temperature, serve it cold? It's preference. Um, it's mm -hmm. almost like uh, eating as well, uh, where somebody might like their tequila really cold. Or, okay. you know, maybe they like it room temperature. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, drinks are subjective. It's, it's what you like. And then also with these tequilas, you said usually uh, because there's the different agings and different price points to it, the one that's aged the most, that's the one you just want to kind of sip on. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That one, you know, almost relative okay. to like a, a fine or a nice scotch, pour it, you know, with one ice cube or, or you can have it by itself and you kind of just sip on it. All right. What's next? All right. So let's go and pour that ice into that mixing oh, cup. Whoops. No big deal. I knew if I jumped the gun, I'd get in trouble here. So, all right. And then let's pour some of the tequila in here. This is the Blanco or the silver. And again, until you're comfortable. Until you're comfortable. And then we have uh, fresh squeezed lime juice. Mm -hmm. That's good. And then we have uh, the triple sec, and then this is just a, uh, a dash. Um, some people would consider okay. this a, a skinny margarita, mm -hmm. so it's less calories, less sugar. So shake it up. Yep. Flip it right over. Perfect. Now, is this going in? This is going to go into this glass. Right in there? Yeah. Okay. This is going to be a uh, margarita on the rocks. Oh, the whole thing? The whole thing. Ah. With a nice little garnish on top and cheers. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Hmm. Price points on some of these. About comparable to, like you said, the a really good bottle of scotch for the, the one that's aged the most? Yeah, so the thing with Amorada Amor Amor tequila is not breaking the bank, making a really high-end quality tequila uh, at, a, at a good price point, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're looking in the 30 range for the Blanco, you know, low 40s, and then uh, an Ahokan range range from 50 to 60. And you can find it locally here in San Antonio? Yeah, you can find them at Total Wine, a lot of liquor stores. Uh, we also have them in various uh, bars where you can go in and obviously order a drink. And also, the bottles themselves are really, really cool looking. You said they're all handcrafted. Handcrafted bottles, yeah, and it's a small factory out of Magdalena, uh, Mexico, which is in the state of Jalisco. Okay. Marco, thank you very much. For more information on Amarado Tequila, visit SALive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. And coming up, simple sewing crafts that can be done in under 20 minutes. And get this, anybody can learn the craft in the new year. That tutorial is coming up right after the break. Plus, a special performance from West Kings Highway. Stick around. They were... And there he is, <laughs> pack of the parachute. Starting first class, Corey Rush. And he's going to be down there at the Alamo Dome. I don't know if he's going to be sewing, though. No. I wonder if he could sew a parachute. I don't know. You can just pack them and jump on them. So. <laughs> we asked him if he wanted to sew. He kind of he had to pack up. So anyway, if you're looking for a new hobby, sewing might just be your new favorite pastime. A local crafter, Stacey Pyron, yes. is here to show you a couple of ideas. And you can yes. do these in... Very, less very than quickly. 20, less yeah. than 20 minutes. And once you get good at it, I promise these hand warmers, 10 minutes tops. 
Okay, because we've got tops. some hand towels. Yes, yeah, right? so we're going to start with the hand towels. Mm -hmm. So these are basically just simple bar towels. You can use a regular hand towel. Mm -hmm. You can even go so far as using a bath towel, too. And all I did was jazz them up. Mm -hmm little bit of rickrack, a little okay. bit of ribbon. Mm -hmm. You just lay it down, cut it to the, the size you want. Right. I did kind of finish up the edges on the rickrack because that does start to fray. Ah, okay. So okay. what we're going to do, um, like I did on there, we just lay them out in a good, like a good space in between. Make it nice and nice and pretty, nice and even, or however you want. However you know, you this is your it. project. The world is yours. Do yes. whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. um, so you're just going to sew a straight line. Straight across each one. And Mike is actually manning the machine. Now, a lot okay. of people, I think, might be afraid of a sewing machine, mm -hmm. but... It's it, not that hard. Listen. Like anything else, it, it yes, gets more complicated, exactly. but the it's basic is... It's not like is... jumping out of a plane. So... No. <laughs> you guys, can, you guys can say which one's harder. <laughs> yes, he would okay. probably say this is harder. I don't so. know, but for me, this is very easy. If you can just learn to sew a straight line, mm -hmm. get some cheap fabric, just learn, practice that. Look, Mike's doing it. Oh, my. Yeah, and, and that's all there like is the, to it. you've got, like, the Cadillac of sewing machines. I do, yes. yes. I have a good machine, but I will tell you this. I learned on a machine from Walmart that was $75, and all I needed it to do was a straight line, straight line. and that's exactly what it did. Once I decided I needed a machine with a little more options, that's when I went and invested in a good machine. So if someone yes. is starting out for the first time, like, yeah. what, what type of material is, you know what I mean? What would you start out okay, kind of practicing thing, on? What do you practice on? The thing that I would highly recommend to beginners is you don't want to go cheap on your supplies. You can buy cheaper stuff if you've got a project that you've got nice fabric, but you don't want to potentially ruin it. Right. But if you want to make a project that will last, I highly recommend that you buy fabric and you buy your machinery, your materials, your scissors, your pins. Spend the money on it because it's going to last a long time for you. And those projects are going to last you a lot longer than any of the cheap fabric would. Even like like you said, good pair of scissors because cutting oh, material yes. with dull yes. scissors. No, know, it will fray. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and you don't want to be fighting the, the fabric with a and piece of scissors. And why sew something yeah. and then try and cut it and, and, you, and you wreck it? So exactly. So while Mike's a, finishing up that. Do you have a back that? stitch? Yeah, back actually. Which one? Um, um, right here? Oh, that one's that, that one's one right there. Okay. Yeah. The Look at that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then press the little scissors. And press that, it. Just press it and it's going to cut. Really? Lift the foot, yes. Wow. Cadillac. Cadillac, Cadillac of no machines. Right yes. There. So while it we're finishing up that, too. yes, <laughs> it's wonderful. Could you get him in this today? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> There's... I'm not computer savvy. There's way too many buttons and you numbers learn. on here. You learn. So. I promise. You learn. So our next project, really easy, quick hand warmers. This is just a square of fabric. I highly recommend you use 100% cotton material and thread okay. because you're going to warm this up in the microwave, and I don't want it to melt in your microwave or potentially blow your machine up. Right. So all I did was simple stitches around three of the edges. You want to leave one open so that you mm -hmm. can fill it with the rice. The rice is what gets warm once you put it in the microwave. So after you've done that, exactly like Fiona's doing, you're gonna turn inside it inside out, out so okay. that those seams are on the inside. If you're using like felt or even the terry cloth like I've done today, you actually can leave the raw edges out because they aren't gonna fray. However, if you're using certain other materials, um, Pick up your mess, it yeah. could fray, yes. You need to be okay with the fact that rice is gonna get everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's going to happen, just accept it and life will be easier for everyone, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 yes. we, we apply that motto That's, exactly. show. I mean, That's really what do. the There's dog is for. So. Exactly, yes. So once you do that, you just kind of fold the top in mm -hmm. just like that and then you're just going to sew a really quick seam right along the edge there okay just fold it down like that yep. okay mm -hmm. and then just pop it right in yep. here if i can get it underneath and the, just like underneath mike and i were talking there during we the break there are some bulky materials that you kind of have to work with you kind of have to manipulate the machine and the right. material because this has a little bit of bulk but not as bad as no, denim, not denim. Right. exactly yeah so yeah and just like that really quick it cuts finishing i that. love I it i know it's <laughs> wonderful and there you go. Yeah. I would recommend that when you start putting it, warming it up in your oh, microwave, you. you do it in about 30 second increments. Mm -hmm. All microwaves are different. Um, you don't want it to just start burning up. Right. Because you've put it in there for four minutes. Right. Um, so that is what I would recommend for people who are making these at home. Super easy to do. Like I said, I use terry cloth. Some of these are made from um, flannel. You can use that as well. Um, and you can kind of make them your own. I used a bunch of different prints, a bunch of different colors. So they would be really great for Christmas gifts. I know in Texas, 10 days out of the year we're cold with the exception of right now. 
So yeah, well, that would have been a great perfect. gift, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So our final project. And the infinity scarves. Infinity scarves, just like these here. So this is basically a long rectangle. I folded it in half mm -hmm. and sewed up two sides, one long, one short. And then on this end, okay. Yeah, so now what you're going to do is just open, turn it inside out, okay. essentially. Yeah. Okay. So like this? Yeah. Just all the way. Stick all your arm in there. Oh, all the way. Yeah. 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 I'm on it. It's like an opera glove. We're <laughs> smarter, <laughs> not harder. There you go. And just turn it inside out. <laughs> Have a we little fun with the puppet show. No, I love it. Good. Okay. I would be lying if I said I didn't do that at home. So don't okay. worry about it. So now we've got this long tube, right? Yes. So what we're going to do is stick one end inside the open end. Okay. Okay. Keep the seam handy here. Yeah, we go. there you okay. go. Okay. Yes, you want to make sure that. End. Now with the infinity scarf, it wouldn't be too big of a deal if yeah. things got a little twisted because you're going to twist them up anyway. Yeah. Fold then, in the seam if you can. Okay. Again, we're go. using jersey on this. I've used flannel, fleece, um, even some coordinating cottons here, and I even jazzed it up with a little bit of ribbon there. Um, with the jersey uh, or any knit material, you can just leave the seams out and they will not fray, which is oh, wonderful. Because yeah. jersey has a kind of has a mind of its own. Right. Um, so any way that you can find it easier to work with is wonderful. All right. And you have a blog. Viewers can find your works and ideas. Um, I've actually got an Instagram page. The oh, blog ooh. is forthcoming, but okay. I will have easy step-by-step -step pictorial how-tos onto on my page later today for these pro projects. Well, look at us. You there have an infinity it. it's scarf. It's an original Osterhage. It is, <laughs> yes. <laughs> house of Osterhage. There we go. Like yes, it does. House, it does, yes. It? For He's more so information on all these is, ideas, and stay so far and visit SALive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Okay, coming up tomorrow, or Monday, I should say, on SA Live, balancing your mind, body, and soul with a calorie-burning workout using a balance ball. That's actually today. And... The sweet and soulful sounds of West Kings Highway, where you can catch them this weekend. That's right after the break. Who are you? Yep, and this week's cool zone is the San Antonio Coffee Festival, a celebration of coffee open to all coffee lovers. You can taste amazing, fresh, locally roasted coffee from all over the world. Meet local coffee artisans who will roast and brew 80 coffees. That'll keep you up. Woo! Spinning, 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 buzzing around. The event is happening tomorrow at La Villita, and it's family-friendly. You can expect live music, food, and more, and of course, coffee. That's this week's cool zone brought to you by the Buyer Boys. Well, you know who else you could catch at the San Antonio uh, Coffee Festival is West Kings Highway. Ooh, yeah, great sounds. They uh, combine soul, rock, and the sound of blues to create a delicious South Texas blend of really good movie music. Pardon me. <laughs> and you can catch West Kings Highway tomorrow at the San Antonio Coffee Festival from 3 to 5. For ticket information, visit SALive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. And here they are performing their song, Moments. Take it away, gentlemen. All the roads I've traveled 
Festival from 3 to 5 p.m. For ticket information, you know what to do. Head to our website. Click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Coming up, build your strength and endurance with a balance ball workout that you can do at home. Stay with us. exercise without doing a whole lot of movement but believe me you're going to feel it and you know what it also works your legs Joseph Brooks from next level fitness personal trainer joins me and he is going to show us how to have a ball right here in the gym what we're specifically working with is a stability ball okay you can find this at any sports outlet and what the stability ball will work on is what uh, stability it's going to work on your core, your legs, your heart rate. If you've never used one before, make sure you stand close to a wall or you use the back of a chair. And the first thing we want to do is just stand on it. So we'll bend the knees slightly, keep your shoulders back. There you go, you're good. Inhale through your nose and out through your mouth. You want to just hold this position for about 30 seconds, okay? And this 30 seconds is going to force oh. the blood into your legs and you'll start to feel it. Oh, I already feel the burn at the tops of my thighs. There you go, at the tops of your thighs. So now we're going to add a little twist. We're going to just run in place, right? Here. Doesn't have to be a drastic run, just a tiny little movement. And you'll start to feel those quadriceps, those thighs Ooh. tighten up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, the objective is to be able to do this without holding on to the wall, but that comes over time. Five, four, three, two, one. Fantastic. Good. But you can do a ski move on this. It's going to work on your glutes and your thighs, okay? What you want to do, hold on to your wall and just turn the knees in and out. Not too drastic, just a subtle turn, nice and soft. Keep the knees bent, there you go. So it's gonna work the top of your thighs, the bottom of your legs, your calves. Keep your tummy tight and remember to breathe. Wow. 30 seconds is what you wanna do this exercise for. Flat on the ball, keep your shoulders back, tummy tight, just gonna go down like a Suprema ballerina. Grace there you go. and elegance. Grace and elegance, yes. <laughs> there you go. Five more. Five. There you go. You can use the arm. Four. Three. I'm not as graceful as you are. <laughs> Two. Last one. One. Good. Now to burn it out. Elegant. We're going to bend the knees. Last one. As fast as you can. There you go. Five seconds. Four. Three. Woo. Two. Done. Woo, good job. Now that's a really great one because it's fairly low impact too. It's very low impact, but it forces you to stabilize yourself. Very good exercise. And that way there's no pounding. 
Great for athletes and seniors. Anyone can do this. All right, great stuff from personal trainer Joseph Brooks at Next Level Fitness. His website is studionextlevel.org, and you can find a link to that on our website, salive.com. Just click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Coming up, we're going to float your boat with a peek at the San Antonio Boat Show. And Monday on SA Live, two favorites combined, barbacoa and big red. Oh, yeah, it's a thing, and we're showing you where you can snag these delicious barbacoa wontons. That's Monday. set sail at the San Antonio Boat Show. The hottest boats, kayaks, jet skis, wave runners, and more are all on display here at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. And Mike Dyson, sales associate, is here to float your boat and tell us all about the latest trends this season. There's a lot of exciting new trends mm -hmm. in boating, including the new pontoon lines that uh, have really evolved over the years with more performance, more luxury, more fun stuff, big sound systems, lighting. People Everything. like to go boom, boom when <laughs> exactly. they're on the lake, right? Everything you can do to enjoy time on the water. <laughs> Uh, including water sports. You know, pontoons years ago were slow and kind of grandpa's boat. Mm -hmm. All that's changed. We've got 350 horsepower, plenty of performance, good ride, room for everybody, and lots of good music and, and fun to be had. So are those the more popular boats? It's a, it's a really fast-growing segment of the boat business. At the, at the boat show, the great thing is there's lots of different choices. Mm -hmm. Every kind of boat you can imagine is here, from a small fishing boat all the way up to a large fishing boat, pontoon boats, ski boats, you name it. It's all here under one roof, easy to shop. You don't have to drive all over town. It's here ready to look at. All right, speaking of the boat you were ta just talking about, mm -hmm. this is the party boat, right? This is, this is one of the best ways to get on the water and have some fun. This boat looks like it was born to party. It is, yep, absolutely. <laughs> this is the Harris Crown, 25 foot, that's uh, designed to hold a crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, keep everybody having fun all day long with, like I said, plenty of good music, lots of shade. Uh, even when the sun goes down, you got lots of cool lighting and uh, good ambiance in the boat. So how's the ride? The best part of a pontoon boat is they don't actually go, they kind of ride on top of the water. So it's like riding on air, literally. So they're very, very smooth in the water. When the water gets rough during the day, you're just gliding along the top. That helps you keep your dance moves. That's solid. right. That's right. <laughs> exactly. yeah, very stable, very fun. Ideally laid out for a lot of people to kind of converse and sit around and enjoy each other's company. Plenty of cup holders where you need it. Nice luxury teak table. Luxury flooring that's low maintenance and easy on your feet. Moving back, you've got the nice big sun pad that we actually do a safety rail around the back of the boat. Allows you to ride there while the boat's underway. Most boats, you have to be inside. This allows you to sit outside of the back of the boat. If you're into water sports, this is the boat for water sports fanatics, right? Absolutely. This is incredible. What is this? It looks like Batman's boat. This is the flagship <laughs> Nautique. This is the Nautique G25, which is the largest in their series of G boats. So Designed to accommodate a crowd again. Uh huh. A little bit more active crowd. Uh huh. We're going to be surfing, wakeboarding, skiing, just pulling a tube. Great day on the water. Everybody's active behind the boat designed to uh, maximize the fun. And when you speak of maximizing the fun, there is technology on this boat to help do that, right? This boat is full of technology. And being the leader in the industry, Nautique has always got the most refined systems, makes it easier for the end user, safe boats to operate, lots of fun. And when the lights go down, the party can still continue, right? Absolutely. Full of lighting. This year they have a, a lighting system that allows you to choose your color, mm -hmm. or you can put it on a rotation where it changes color all the time. When you're wake surfing, your speed's between 10 and 12 miles an hour. So it's a nice low speed sport. Anybody from 5 to 75 can do it. If you crash, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> Even heavier guys can get up behind the boat. And it, so. Have you done it? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. The size of this boat could be intimidating to a lot of people. Nautique always being the front runner has developed a steering assist system. So basically anybody that can drive a car can drive this boat at low speeds. It's got an electric motor that corrects the steering, makes it easy for anybody to drive. So you're saying I could drive it? Anybody. I can have you driving, I can have you docking in five you minutes. You would trust me. Absolutely, yep. We've taken people that don't know anything about a boat, except they want one, and in four or five minutes they're driving it. Could you get me in this today? I could, actually, that's what we're here for. That's the great thing about the boat show. It's an easy way to shop, right. easy way to select your right boat, mm -hmm. and make the best deal. All right. We're here to sell them. The San Antonio Boat Show is happening now through Sunday, January 7th at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. It's the first time this is right down here by the Riverwalk, and we want to send you here for free. Head to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash SALiveKSAT. Click the link and enter for your chance to win. All rules and regulations for the contest are posted on SALive.com. And for more information on the San Antonio Boat Show, you can visit their website, SanAntonioBoatShow.com.
for coming. Ah, it's the weekend, but we're looking forward to Monday and yes. coming up, oh, a new take on wontons. We're talking barbacoa, big red, and wontons combined. He made a big this red so sauce. So oh, good, my goodness. Guys. That was so tasty. Seriously. All right. Plus, how to style leather. We're showing you how to add that daring piece to your daily outfit. That is all Monday at 1. And we have to give a special shout out, a special hi yes. to... One of our biggest fans, oh, Sylvia. Yes. yes, Sylvia, the Spurs lady. She is recovering right now and asking for prayers after suffering from a heart attack on Christmas Day. Oh, my goodness. So, Sylvia, you have our love and prayers. And there she is. That's with Jen. She is down here all the time, a new out, dressed up and everything, and just as, as sweet as can be. And, of course, you know, a lot of folks have uh, seen her out and about. Yeah. So, hope you're uh, enjoying it. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend, everybody. And um, we'll see you Monday. Okay. All right. Yes.